Hello everybody and welcome to your 18th SFML tutorial. So uh, we, we finally can say that uh, we, we got the splash screen on uh, on a kind of a level that we want it to so we can move forward right and if you guys aren't pleased with your, your splash screen or, or not pleased with the way I've done it then you can always uh, let me know or, or take it upon a challenge for yourself to try and improve it to, to make it any way you want it to be. Anyways, it's time to work on the title screen. So the title screen is going to consist of a menu, right? Or whether you want to call it a main menu screen or whatever you want to call it, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it's going to consist of a menu, right? So the options that we're going to have or that I'm going to put are new game, load game, options, credits, and exit. Okay, so the new game obviously is going to be able to start a new game. Load game will check if they have any uh, load game files on there if there is then they can load um, from a from a checkpoint or previous save point options can modify game options like the the volume uh, for the sound effects or the background music or maybe some controls depending on what different options you want uh, the credits will be who you give credits to uh, so what do you want to give credits to me what do you want to give credits to your teacher or to somebody who provided you sprites or anything anybody that you want to give credit to is always a good thing to give credits because uh, I don't know it's, it's kind of like a courteous thing to do I guess but it's really entirely up to choice right and uh, lastly exit if they just want if they don't want to click the X button they can press the exit button um, that they can click the exit option Okay, so what we gotta do before we even get into the main menu stuff, uh, we've got to add in something to the file manager class, and that's what we're just gonna be doing this tutorial. So we're just gonna be modifying the file manager class. Uh, so it shouldn't be a, a very long tutorial, and I guess it's kind of like a relief because you guys have had a, a lot of long tutorials uh, back to back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, go to farmandrew.h and copy and paste this, and we're gonna add one more option, and it's gonna call I be called ID. In the private section, we're gonna make a boolean called ID found. So let us open up farmandrew.cpp, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy all this right here because it's essentially the same. Uh, we're just going to be adding one last thing to it. So we're just going to copy that and paste it. And then we're going to have to add in right here. So it's an overload, okay? So at the top right here, uh, we're going to say that ID found is equal to false. And that's before we actually check if the file is open and such. So what we're going to say is that if ID found, uh, then we execute the rest of this code, right? and just got to comment that I mean indent not comment got to indent that so how are we going to set uh, id found equals to true well this is how we're going to do it uh, we're going to say we're going to have two commands so uh, let me open up the splash screen file okay so in our splash screen file, we have load equals blah, 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 blah. Like, everything we need to load, right? And the way it is set up, is it's good that, like, we have an everything that we want to load at once. The way our menu is going to work is like this. We're going to have all the menus in one file. Since it's not a super huge game, right? So we're not going to have, like, and even super huge game don't have, like, they might have, like, hundreds of menus, but I'm not sure, but... To be frank, we can we can handle all the menus in one file um, if it doesn't become too complicated. So how do we do this? With this method right here, all we're doing is just we're going to be loading in as much things as we specify to load, right? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to implement two different new commands, right? This is going to be start equals and end equals. So they're going to be followed by an identifier. So you don't even have to put the identifier in braces or whatever. But the reason why I put it in square braces is because uh, um, it kind of signifies something, whatever. But if you using the start equals and end equals command, you really don't have to 
I'll put them in square braces, right? Uh, but you put in the ID, like the ID, whatever you want to identify by. So say I have my title menu. My ID might be a title. So I might say, uh, let me just save this as menus. So I might, so if I'm, this, this states that I'm starting to load the title menu and this is the end of loading the title uh, menu. So anything I want to load for the title menu, I can load in here, whether it be the position, the axis, et cetera, et cetera, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And then say I have another uh, menu for like, say a shop menu or whatever, right? I can say end uh, in here and shop. So whichever, what it's going to do is that it's going to basically kind of be like, it's going to parse. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's going to scroll through our whole text file until it, oh, it should be start. Sorry. It's going to scroll through our, our, our code until it finds the start, the proper start command with the right ID. And then it will reach, when it reaches the end of the program, uh, end of the command, then it will, then it will stop loading. So how are we going to do this? We're going to say that if line dot find and we'll say start equals and and if you want you could just say start equals and you can put the i you can say uh plus id whatever and you can put it all in this in a say whatever plus id and you can do it all in one line if you're planning to put it in uh put in the square braces right uh, but if you're not planning to put them in the square braces or whatever, maybe you don't want to do it this way. It depends which way you really want to do it. But if you do it this way, you can say uh, uh, if line dot find this not equals std string and position. Uh, and I'll show. I'll just put it in both different ways to show um, which way it is. So what we'll do is we'll say id found is equal to true, and we'll say continue. Now, why do we say continue? Uh, we say continuous because uh, we're not loading any data, right? If we don't put continue, then it's going to say id equals found, and it's going to say it's going to go through this, right? Nothing's really going to happen because it's not, uh, well, it, it's not going to see load equals, so it's going to think it's a content, and then therefore we're going to get in some problems. Uh, so we just say continue, so we'll just uh, resume back to the top of it, um, the top of our while loop. And now we're going to have an else if, and we're going to say line.find, and we'll say end equals not equals std string and position and line dot find uh, id and not equals std string and position. So it doesn't matter which one you use. And then if this is true, then we'll say id found equals a false. And we'll say break to exit it. So this way, it will only load whatever's in um, wh whatever's in that range. And we'll see it at work in the next tutorial. So we're just gonna end it there. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching, and bye.